Hello everyone and welcome to a redo of my AM225 in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In the previous video, the AM225 had a bit of a problem getting the results that I wanted, specifically being able to carry the mass that it was supposed to, and it had other curious effects that you'll have to watch the previous video in order to fully appreciate. First of all, I decided to lighten up the stock textures uh, that the lack stock extensions parts are based on, so these parts are now a little bit more the white color that the plane is supposed to be and of course I have other mods like B9 procedural wings you can just uh, press J and change the color on so I just adjusted the color to match on that and also a DCK allowed me to change the color on the turbofans. Uh, one part that I neglected was this part here this aerodynamic shoulder is from Mark IV uh, space plane parts and so I'm gonna have to do that separately but not right now. Uh, but of course that wasn't and that's just cosmetic and not really what we're here for uh, I decided at the end of the previous video that my main problem was drag from adding too much thickness to the wing and Adding more than one wing part which seems to confuse fair mirror space. So I Decided to just go with a single wing piece as you can see here even uh, dropping the additional wing piece that was on the type 1 version that has some unfortunate effects as far as our center of mass and center of lift. You can see the center of lift is all the way back there now, which is not great. And uh, yeah, I mean, well, it doesn't seem to hurt actually. And that's basically what I'm making this video to get at, is that even though this is what it looks like, it, it seems to go better than the other versions, especially the Type 2, even though the Type 2 had them much closer together. So that's the thought. Also, uh, I had to move the lead mass all the way back here. Remember, the lead mass is what's bringing our empty mass to the empty mass of the AN-225, which is 285 tons, which you can see here. And I've moved it back to this tank because, well, at least that will change our center mass somewhat to bring it closer. I mean, uh, there's having the center mass really far forward and having it really, really far forward. So I decided to just move it back a little bit. Um, we are currently carrying the maximum fuel load for the AN-225, which is 300 tons. You can see that by the difference between these two. And we are going to see whether this can take off. And I've already tested it, and it's sort of iffy, but it's close. It's really close. So whether it actually succeeds or not, well, we're going to find out. Okay, here we are on the shuttle runway, and I'm going to have the brakes toggled. I don't have... Uh, spoilers on here yet, which is a shame, but we're basically trying to figure out takeoff right now and actually getting to altitude. Landing would benefit from the spoiler, so would roll, by the way. They are used for that, but for now, I think I'll be satisfied just trying to uh, get this the performance it's supposed to have. So, actually, not SAS, I'll use the fly by wire system. And we are at full... okay, so flaps two notches. Okay, flap setting two, and ignition. And we will wait for the turbo fans to spool up. So, the AN-225 would not be able to carry a substantial load with a full fuel load like this. The full fuel load would give it 15,000 kilometer range or about 9,000 miles or so and with a 200 ton payload it would be reduced to only 4,000 kilometers and 2,500 miles. Uh, its maximum takeoff mass is 640 tons. We're at 585 right now which is you know just 55 tons short of the maximum takeoff mass. Okay, I think uh, we're pretty high up there. I don't think it's going to get any better than 189 this time. I've seen it up to... Oh, well, once we start moving here, it gets better. Okay, good. Okay, we don't need that up anymore. Obviously, tending to one side would be a bad thing, airplane. Okay, I would really like to be able to get off the ground before the end of the runway, of course. So, let's see. Rotating. 
Well, I, I sense it. I sense it. Come on. You can do it. Yes. There we go. Okay. We are climbing. But we don't want to lose velocity, otherwise we're gonna stop climbing eventually. I'm not gonna retract the wheels right now because of that problem we had in the previous video. I'm just gonna climb a bit and then retract the wheels. Let's get to 500 meters minimum, let's say. Right now we're at a constant speed. So this is obviously a big improvement over the previous version and it seems to be down to the drag of the wings. Uh, it just doesn't like a thicker wing route. Which the AN225 would have, but we really can't simulate properly here. And of course if I made the wings even thinner, though that would reduce the capacity for fuel, we could increase the capacity of fuel in these hull sections. I don't know what the current capacity is based on, but I imagine they could carry more than they are doing right now. A mere 5,000. So this section carries 5,000 liters. This wing carries 57,000. So, well, you can go either way on that. But, yeah. We could increase the amount of fuel that that carries and make the wing thinner. We need a place to put the fuel, though, obviously. Okay, well, let's retract the wheels now. Uh, it does reduce the speed, though not as dramatically as it did before. But... Well, let's wait until it actually settles down. I haven't touched the stick... The control stick yet. And we have been pretty stable at 105 meters per second, right? No, uh, it's pretty consistently going down. It's almost as if the wheels were giving us more lift. But let's try and accelerate now. It seems to have settled down. I, we lost in total about 13 meters per second, it seems. And I'm going to retract the flap somewhat to aid in acceleration before we, like, hit the water. If we're going to manage to go up, we're going to need speed. But we do want to try and do a little traffic pattern and perhaps get back home. I guess I might as well test that. Though, I imagine that they wouldn't want to land with the full fuel load. But they can land with a 200 ton payload, so... I guess it must be possible. And of course emergency landings happen. So, taking off, we were on runway 33, so we're turning to 240 right now. Would make sense. It's gonna take a lot of climbing before this goes its cruising velocity. I really don't need it to accelerate right now. Because the faster I let it go, the more I have to dump speed when we try and land. Okay, yeah, let me slow down a bit. Let's see. Let's see how much drag it has, or whether we're gonna be in trouble as far as slowing down is concerned. Let's still go up a bit. Well, engine's on idle. No, uh, it's dumping speed decently. I don't have to go all the way down there. Gotta fix this one part though. Gonna have to go through all the Mark uh, 4 space beam parts and lighten them up. It'll all look better, I think. Gray is more of a military thing. I feel like uh, lighter textures would make it more like experimental aircraft anyway. So, this is all very important because. Max, if I wanted to do the Max spacecraft, M-A-K-S, um, that whole system, the spacecraft and its external tank, would have weighed 275 tons. And right now, we, we were carrying a fuel load of 300 tons, 
So that means with the max spacecraft, it'd be the equivalent of carrying 25 tons of fuel inside, and then the max spacecraft on the outside. But then the spacecraft is going to cause a whole lot of extra drag. So it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough to get this off the ground with that spacecraft on it. Um, though it's not entirely clear to me what engines they used on that, we could perhaps improve upon it. Basically the max spacecraft was a little shuttle. Sort of like a Dream Chaser but launched on the back of an AN-225. And it had its own little external fuel tank. Little I say, 275 metric tons is hardly little. Um, yeah. Okay, well, let's turn towards the runway. And the shell runway, of course. We're not going to try the KSC runway. So here's a question. If I drop the landing gear, will we speed up? So, uh, in modifying this, I did start out with the Block 2, or the Type 2, instead of going for the Type 1 first. Because I had also changed the vertical stabilizers. Well, let's see. We are going faster overall, and I don't know if having the flaps down or up makes any difference. We're decelerating. I deployed the landing gear. No appreciable effect on our our aircraft. Interesting. So, make of that what you will. As long as this flies, I, I, I don't care that much. Jeez. Uh, A little bit too far to the left. And it's not like the rudders do too much work. Oh. Flap setting 2 right now. Well, that is awfully big. Uh, and probably descending too quickly. Woo! Why does it seem like I've got a crosswind going here? Come on. Okay, we have contact with the ground. Not the best landing ever, but okay. It was weird, because I had to do like full left rudder. But... I wasn't lined up properly anyway, and as I so often do, we've got this sort of skidding start on this runway, uh, stop in this runway. Uh, you will see that in another video I've already recorded with the T-38 shuttle. And, well, it's a little bit off of its front, front wheels, but at least not scraping its tail. Alright, well, that's the AN-225 at uh, 300 tons payload, well now 295. Uh, not payload, but fuel fuel capacity. Maybe we should try it out with a lighter fuel capacity just really quickly, just see how it takes off. Okay, so this time it'll have a mere 100 tons of fuel, and thanks to the fact that I've decided to keep the fuel in the tail tanks, uh, the kerosene there, and of course there's still the ballast in that tank as well, uh, the center of mass have, has moved back towards the center of lift, and we'll see what kind of effect that has. 100 tons of fuel is still 3 hours according to this, which is actually more flight time than this is indicating, because we throw all down for cruise. But anyway, let's see what it does on the runway. Ah, I think we have a bit of a problem here. Uh, yeah. I think I was too enthusiastic about moving that center of mass back. And, of course, the way we got the center lift as far back as it was was because we removed wing pieces. That wasn't really the best way of doing things. Okay, moving the center mass back forward again. Okay, well it's teetering a bit. Uh, we still got a hundred tons of fuel, it's just moved forward a little bit more. Uh, we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it'll settle down. I'll try and push the pitch down. 
to start off. Whoa, there was actually a bounce in this runway. Uh, can we pull up now? Maybe... Yes, yes, we can take off. Okay, well, about 80 meters per second we can take off at. Maybe even earlier, I don't know. And, well, no drop off in speed when I retract the landing gear now. But we weren't actually going as fast as we were when trying to re retract the landing gear before. I wonder, I mean, it's a weird idea, but if the landing gear was somehow attached to some ground effect thing, that would probably do it, maybe. Anyway, retracting the flaps. Well, now it's looking like a less burdened flying machine, that's for sure. And. Yep, doing all right. So anyway, that's uh, my continued experimentation with the AN-225 and hopefully we'll get to use it for more practical things in the near future. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.